Hi and welcome to Terry Talks Movies. This time around I've got a 2024 horror movie for you. An Australian one which is getting a lot of good buzz and rightly so. It's a little thing called Late Night with the Devil starring David Dasmalchen. Filmed here in Melbourne and it's a great little horror movie. It was written and directed by another pair of Australian brothers after the Philippine brothers who did Talk To Me. Cameron and Colin Cairns. And it has a lot of cultural references that aren't American, even though it is technically set in America, but which are peculiar to Australian television in the 1970s. And I'll talk about that as well. David Dasmalchen stars as a late-night talk show host called Jack Delroy, who's chasing on the ratings coattails of Johnny Carson's show. His show never quite equals Johnny Carson, and it's becoming a little bit of an industry joke. His wife, Madeline, dies of lung cancer, even though she was never a smoker. And he's kind of coming back from that. But he's still got a lot of issues to do with the death of his wife. And we find out a lot of the reasons why that's the case as the movie progresses. It's Halloween night, 1977, and Jack decides that his show, Night Owls, is going to do a Halloween-themed episode. It's going to be all about the supernatural and the satanic panic of the 1970s. And so he lines up a few guests he has a psychic called Christu, played really well by Faisal Bazi, who does cold readings. He has a skeptic on board as well. He used to be a stage magician, a guy called Carmichael Haig, played by Ian Bliss, who debunks psychics as his new business model. He's the equivalent of, say, James Randi back in the day. And again, that has an Australian resonance I'll tell you about in a moment. The pair of guests he has for the third act are a parapsychologist called June Ross Mitchell, played by Laura Gordon, who's adopted a young girl called Lily, played by Ingrid Toretti, who was raised by a satanic cult, which did a Waco thing and um, ended up burning everybody to death except her. And she, at times, is possessed by a demon she calls Mr. Wrigley. June that helps her manage that and control it. She's written a book about it. It's become very prominent. And Jack decides he's going to do all of this stuff for his Halloween episode to get the ratings and to beat Johnny Carson. Like all late night talk shows, he has a sidekick girl called Gus, played by Reese or Terry, who's the usual jovial, slightly rotund, butt of the joke kind of sidekick. And the show starts. This is framed as a found footage story. There's a crawl at the start of the movie which tells us that this is the long lost original master tapes of the last show that Jack Delroy does as a talk show host. And so for the most of the movie, movies framed in a 3 by 2 aspect ratio like an old TV screen, the resolution's about what you'd get from a master tape of an old 1970s TV show. And then in between the bits on that tape, we get a widescreen high definition black and white bit where you see the behind the scenes scenes that are occurring in the commercial breaks. And there are some scenes at the end of the film which are done in colour and high definition and widescreen. So you get a whole bunch of different meat kind of formats. When I talk about Australian references, there are a lot of references in this movie to the Don Lane show, the TV show from the 1970s where an American expatriate song and dance man and comedian called Don Lane was incredibly popular on Australian late night television. He had Bert Newton as a sidekick, a rotund, bald sidekick. And Don Lane got involved with psychics, particularly a northern English woman called Doris Stokes who did cold readings and convinced a lot of people that she could talk to the dead by doing cold readings. My name is Harris. Harris. This is my Rob mother. Harris. That's my mother. Yeah. That's her. And it's your mum because she said you were her baby and she hasn't been over all that long, my darling. Don Lane loved her. He believed every bullshit thing she said and then james randy came along an american skeptic and ex-magician who was very much like carmichael haig in played night with the devil and he debunked her he debunked her pretty effectively and this pissed off don lane because don lane believed that she was a psychic because don lane wasn't very bright and he lost his temper at james randy on air and told him to piss off a liar. No. And that woman would no, lie to I anybody. And I don't know whether she's right or wrong, I but she would lie to anybody. And we're going for a commercial break and you can So this movie has a lot of that as a kind of seed for Late Night with the Devil. It's got a lot of ghosts. Watch the early 1990s English spoof with Michael Parkinson pretending to do a psychic investigation 
in a haunted house in the UK. Ghost Watch is a lot of fun. You should see that as well. So the show starts, and Jack is the usual kind of obsequious talk show host who won't reach the level he wants to because he doesn't have that sense of self-depreciation that good talk show hosts often have. And he is desperate. You can tell he's desperate. You can tell he really wants to beat Johnny Carson, and he thinks his Halloween show is going to be the thing that does that. There are people from the network in the front row of the audience. His producer is cajoling him in and trying to keep him in control. And the show starts. It starts out with the psychic who does some cold readings that start out not too successful, but then get more successful because of reasons we find out later in the show, which are to do with the fact that cold reading psychics are con people. And the movie does a good job of debunking that kind of bullshit very effectively, using Carmichael Haig, the character, who is the James Randi surrogate in this movie, to debunk them. And even though that happens in the context of real supernatural events happening in the movie, that psychic Christo is debunked thoroughly, and I appreciate that. I think the movie does the right thing there. Then things start happening weird. A theremin that Gus is using goes rogue and starts really acting up, and other things that are just a bit off start happening. And then the young girl and the parapsychologist come out, and the young girl is weird. She very often doesn't look at Jack when she's talking to him. She looks directly down the barrel of the camera as if trying to engage the audience directly in a very freaky way. And Ingrid Torelli does a really good job of playing that young woman, Lily. But there are also a number of other small things that go wrong that build during the earlier stages of the show. And Jack is getting desperate at this stage. The show's not going quite as the way he wanted it to. And he decides that he wants Mr. Wrigley to be contacted by June, the parapsychologist, live on air, using Lily strapped to a chair as the means by which they do that. Things do not go well. Things really start going off the rails. And, and part of it's due to Jack's past, and part of it's due to the fact that there is a real demon in Lily, and that real demon is anxious to manifest in the world. Now, this movie is great. It uh, uses its format wonderfully, the look of it is perfect. It's a perfect evocation of a 1970s talk show. The sets are perfect. The production design is wonderful. The costumes, hair, makeup are all period perfect in this movie. There are people smoking in, in the studio and things like that. There are people drinking on the set, particularly the stuff. And David Dasmalchin as Jack carries the movie fantastically. Das Melton's always been a good actor. He did his dues on stage playing Shake, doing Shakespeare and a number of other things and playing small character roles in things like The Dark Knight. But this is the bit where he gets to shine. His Jack is a bundle of insecurities and ego. He wants to be the best in the business, but it's pretty clear right from the start that he doesn't have what it takes to be that. And so he's looking for gimmicks to carry it. He's willing to do anything to get what he wants. When his wife is dying, he gets her on the show. Now, they talk about the fact she's dying of cancer while she's got um, an oxygen mask on. And you kind of get the idea that he may be milking that for ratings, but also that he genuinely and intensely loves his wife. So he's a character that's ambivalent and complex in a way that many, many movie characters, particularly in horror movies, aren't usually. There are so many little touchstones of 1970s culture. The fact that Jack met his wife Madeline while she was playing in Oak Calcutta, which means nothing to most of the people watching the movie. But if you know what Oak Calcutta is and what's required of the actors in Oak Calcutta, it makes it just that little bit more interesting and cute in a sense. There's something at the moment, there's a moment happening in cinema where fairly small budget Australian horror movies are really hitting the mainstream in a big way. Things like Talk To Me, and it goes back as far as Jennifer Kent's The Babadook, are really giving horror movies that come from a different cultural viewpoint, even if they are set in America. Australia's cultural viewpoint is somewhat different. And so movies like Talk To Me and The Babadook and Late Night With The Devil do have a different perspective from which they're coming. And that's a very exciting thing, particularly for Australians. One of the companies producing this movie is Umbrella Entertainment 
which is probably going to do a physical media release of this film. I definitely hope it does. I want to see more Australian horror movies. I want to see more of this kind of stuff happening where the budgets don't have to be enormous. They don't have to have enormous stars. They just have to have really good actors. And the cast, apart from David Desmarchin, are all Australian actors. They're not particularly familiar faces to most people which in the context of this movie makes it much more interesting. The people look like people of the 1970s. They don't necessarily act as have name value anywhere in the world. You should check this one out if you get the chance to. It's a solid horror movie. It gets crazy at the end in an incredibly fun way. And I really, really enjoyed watching it. I saw it today with my nephew Billy, who, because this is an MA15 rated movie, is 15. And we both enjoyed it thoroughly. It was a good day. As I said, we went to the Sun Theatre. We went to Barclay, one of the cinemas inside the theatre, which is the largest cinema within the complex that is the Sun Cinema in Yarraville. It only has 195 seats in it, but I really like that place. Uh, I think the Sun is becoming my favourite Melbourne cinema to see movies in. So both Billy and I enjoyed the film, and we had a great time just hanging out. Every time we get together, the rule is... We, anytime we're both in the same city, we've got to go see a movie. Um, we've seen a couple so far, and this is the third year we've done that. And I hope it continues for a very long time, because he's a good f companion to go and see a movie with. We saw the movie at a 10.15am session, went and had a bowl of pho each for lunch, across the road at a place called Friend or Pho, which does a really nice pho. And just had a great morning of watching this movie and enjoying Australian cinema in an Australian cinema, and life doesn't get better than that. So if you've seen Late Night with the Devil, let me know what you think about it, or if you want to see it. It's a high recommend from me. I think it does what it does really well. It does what it does with a sense of history and an incredible sense of 1977, which strengthens the story and that frame of having it as a, a kind of found footage, lost, original production tape of the TV show really works well as well. That frame makes it even better when things start going crazy. And the line between reality and fantasy uh, aren't so much blurred as just totally obliterated by the narrative. You should check this one out and you'll have a great time with it. Mate, I'll tell you this right now, movie is good. If you want good horror and unsuspecting horror, good movie. 7 out of 10, I'll watch it again. So that's it for this time around. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can support the channel by becoming a channel member or by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash terrytalksmovies. Next up, I've got Science Fiction Saturday and I've got a few things lined up for that that are going to be fun. So until then... Watch some good movies, watch some bad movies, watch some Australian horror movies because they are the flavour of the millennium and there's not been a bad one in the last few years. And I'll catch you next time.